Caramba. Now, Twister is about a pair of tornado chasers who get woefully upstaged by some pretty heavy special effects. But here with me now, from Norman, Oklahoma, the tornado center of the universe, are a couple of real-life storm chasers. Mark Herndon led one film crew in pursuit of storms from Iowa to Texas to shoot footage for the movie Twister. His chase partner, Matt Biddle, has been involved in Project Vortex at the National Severe Storm Laboratory. Vortex stands for Verification of the Origin of Rotation in Tornadoes Experiment. Now, technically, these guys drive with thunderstorms and monitor atmospheric conditions in order to learn more about twisters. In practice, they live through this. I see it. I see it. Oh! Picture! Picture! Video. That's right. this is 12 3. Yeah, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, the main tornado is just to our northeast. It's submerged. Uh, we're going to send telemetry. Also, we have other I don't know whether they're anti-cyclonic or not. Here's our telemetry. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi. Uh, you shot that video? Uh, it was shot from my vehicle uh, by a, a student that was in the project uh, who had never held the camera before and never seen a tornado before, so he did a pretty good job. He was pretty freaked out. Yeah. Oh, no, was that a run-of-the-mill tornado, or was there anything special about it? No, that was uh, would be the in the 1% of all tornadoes, in the violent category uh that was an f5 uh 1.3 miles wide or a kilometer wide right um, now, physically when you're in a car and you're chasing these mothers uh what does it feel like i mean is, is, there's a lot of pressure in the air right is it almost an underwater feeling or i don't know it's um uh, you're constantly trying to figure out what part of the storm that you're in and we understand the, the structure and dynamics of thunderstorms and it, it constantly changes i mean it's it's more of a chess game in the sky that you're trying to play with, it's uh, only scary when you find yourself unsure of what part of the storm that you're in. <laughs> it's like a chess game. It's like the end game where you're just trying to corner the king. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so it, it, I understand that uh, tornadoes look different from where you are at, whether you're in front of them or behind them. Can you describe how that? Right. I guess it would be a function of the angle of the sun. You know, uh, sometimes they're backlit, sometimes they're front lit. Depends on how much precipitation there is around. They come in all shapes and sizes. Um, they tend to usually be in a certain part of the storm, though, so that's that's one thing that helps us to find them or, or keep track of them. But, uh, you know, yeah, the clouds can be white if, if the sun is behind you, and they can be black if, if you know, you're between the clouds and the sun. So yeah, but I think I read in uh, Details Magazine, one of you was describing that the colors can be incredibly beautiful, like azure and emerald and all these kinds of things. It's not, not just this sort of grim black thing. Right. around. Is that well, right? I think what we're referring to there more is, is, is the entire supercell parent thunderstorm that these tornadoes come from, which are just tremendously beautiful. If you've never seen one, uh, in Oklahoma we don't have beaches. We have very, very small mountains, but the storms that we have there are unimaginably beautiful if you can see them from a distance and are not mm -hmm. uh, undergoing a brunt of one, I guess. But, yeah. but uh, that's the thing that... that always keeps me coming back even after I can go out five times in a row and see nothing you know because it's it's tough to to catch a tornado the rate is what 10 percent uh chases, well yeah one a success rate of about one in 15 and would be considered very respectable uh, so it's pretty exhaustive tell me a little bit about this movie I made a joke before about obviously you know not dramatically a very good movie but uh killer special effects and all that mm -hmm. how, how does it compare to the reality of tornadoes what if people went to see it what should they be looking for that might be true uh, well, I think the destruction that they show and, and, mm -hmm. and that the, they look very real. Uh, the larger ones, in fact, I think look uh, amazingly real, um, and they do cause that kind of destruction. Uh, obviously, the flying debris that manages to miss them on a regular basis is something that people should realize is not uh, uh, the norm. Uh, you know, that's a very serious threat, but uh, it's, it's uh, fun and it's a fictional movie, but it... Yep. Uh, you know, most of the setup type situations there, the shots and, and the way the tornadoes move and stuff is pretty realistic. Uh, 
one of the things I think is quite cool is there's this in instrument of detection, the atmospheric detection, which mm -hmm. I think they call the, the Dorothy mm -hmm. in the movie. Uh, but that's actually based on something in real life called the Toto, right? And all this about the Wizard of Oz, right? Last year, before I went to work for Twister, uh, they just brought the first, second unit team out there to go out and chase storms. And Matt and I were cruising out to the Texas Panhandle. We're chasing together. This is before Vortex got started and everything. We passed them on the highway. We're looking over and we go, what the hell is that? And it says, we go, there's, there's Toto. They haven't used Toto in six years or something. And uh uh, which is the Totable Tornado Observatory that was designed at the University of Oklahoma School of Meteorology. And uh, we were looking at it, and it took us about, we, we sat there on the highway parallel, and it took us about two or three minutes to figure out that it was all fake. <laughs> and then it was the movie guys and stuff, uh -huh. so it was pretty funny. So they sort of tribute to The Wizard of Oz, obviously. Yeah, uh, yeah. One of your favorite movies, maybe? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, when I was a kid, I, that was the, I, I would quit watching the movie after oh. the tornado segment. Well, you the know, tornado I, segment used to terrify me. I, oh, I loved it. I loved it. It's part of probably what got me hooked. I was going to say, well, what is it? How can you have a lifetime fascination with, with tornadoes? Isn't that, a, I don't know, a limiting thing? Uh, I, I, it may not be the healthiest thing to be this obsessed with it uh, financially and, and uh, you know, uh, professionally and things of that sort. Uh, but uh, it seems to be, uh, you know, a function of my personality that I was born with. And I don't know. Uh, where it came from, I just know that I can, I've had it as long as I can remember. You know, they recently they discovered a gene, a, a personality gene, I think it's called the thrill-seeking gene or the danger gene or something like that. You're actually born with this predilection. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is where a lot of these extreme sports guys come from, you know, sky surfers and, mm -hmm. and all this kind of thing. Uh, does that make any sense? <laughs> he has the gene, but we don't think storm chasing is part of that. No, in storm chasing, I've done a lot of things before. Uh, I started rock climbing when I was about 15, and I was basically a climbing bum for about 10 years. And I used to live in Yosemite in the summers and, uh, and just go all over the world and uh, basically uh, you know, live to go climbing. And then got into some other sports that were even probably a little bit worse and more radical. And uh, storm chasing is not like that at all. It's, very, uh, it's a very mental exercise rather than something. It, it's more like it's not like you're sitting there thinking you're going to die or anything like that. I mean, you're, you're, you're trying to, to figure out what's happening in a changing environment. You have to make quick decisions. Otherwise, you're just going to blow it. I mean, you have to, you have to make quick decisions about which way to go, which storm to stay on, all, the, all that stuff. We're real interested in the science, too, and, and the public service aspects of it. Um, you know, we, we make our reports to the Weather Service for the warning system. Vortex was a scientific experiment, which uh, uh, I think uh, will benefit the, the warning systems and future radars for not just for the United States, but for Canada and the world. In fact, Environment Canada was partially involved in Vortex. Um, and we keep good notes. Uh, we're prepared to help in an emergency. Um, you know, so it's, it's I'm not going to say it's not a big thrill and there's not a big adrenaline rush, but it's not... Uh, it's not, uh, it's not a sport, right? Yeah, it's not a sport. At all. I'm interested in this thing about uh, the modeling aspect. I mean, whether meteorologists are trying, obviously, to build computer models of the way oh, the weather works, yes. so they can get exact mm -hmm. predictions of the way the weather's going to go. Mm -hmm. uh, is this a dream? Can we ever actually move towards a sense of controlling weather? You know, or, or let alone predicting it? Sure. I don't think prior, there's a prior chance. to vortex, uh, I think the numerical modelers thought they had a pretty good handle on it. And after Vortex, after the data collected last year, which was an unbelievable amount of data, um, I think most of the understanding of how tornadoes actually form has been thrown out the window. Uh -huh. So or, you really uh, don't know how they work? Well, I mean, there's a lot that's understood about, uh, about how storms begin rotating and things like that. But the actual tornado genesis, the, the actual birth of the tornado, why certain storms that should produce tornadoes don't, why uh, other ones that, like one that you caught, shouldn't have, did produce a huge tornado, uh, it has a lot to do with the effectability of the, of the, or the effectiveness of the warning systems. And that's kind of what Vortex did, is they were verifying the numerical models, and they found out that they were right. right. We, we collected so much data, it'll take years and years to go through it, and we'll continue to learn more from it. Um, so it's actually important a lot of times to what you what you. Uh, didn't prove. I mean, it can be just as valuable, uh, you know, for for future research. And I think we need to continue to do that. 
There's a science fiction story I read once upon a time by John Varley called The Phantom of Kansas, in which there's an artist who conjures weather for entertainment, you know. They go out in the bleachers in the, in the in Midwest somewhere. He makes these fabulous art storms. Mm -hmm. I always wondered if, if there was any sense of moving towards control and if that could be a nefarious thing one day, you know. Uh, e even uh, cloud seeding in North America is controver controversial as far as whether it really works or not. Uh, but as far as controlling thunderstorms, uh, I forget how many, but your average supercell thunderstorm is about the equivalent of, I don't know, a hundred atomic bombs. Uh, the tornado is not an entity, it's a process. It's a small part of this large engine of, of heat and energy transfer. And uh, we're microscopic in terms of what the forces that we could inflict upon something like that. Uh, the difference between a thunderstorm that produces a tornado and it doesn't, I equate to, you know, you throwing one grain of salt in your in your bread and it fails to rise. I mean, it's those types of subtle things in this huge soup of energy. I don't think we have, we're, we're nowhere near, nor, is he, nor are the serious scientists that I know of even considering such things. And yet you were referring, before we got the cameras rolling, to some kind of uh, conspiracy theory about the American uh, military. Yeah, I guess when they were up in Kansas, uh, vor the vortex... Armada was quite a number of vehicles, and they looked very, and very the strange. <laughs> yeah, they looked very, very odd. They had a, uh, lots of uh, instruments coming out of the top of them uh, that were uh, uh, pretty much unlike anything that any normal person had ever seen. And they said, U.S. government on the side, and we're cruising through areas that probably are inhabited by <laughs> militia-type right. folks or whatever. But they, they sort of actually at one point accused uh, Vortex of, of actually causing thunder or causing tornadoes. I think. Right. They came up in a congressional hearing, one of the wackos that... Um, <laughs> Conspiracy wackos, wackos, yeah. 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 Uh, finally, uh, there's this thing about negative ions. And this, I wonder if this goes some way towards describing you, how, how, why you enjoy doing this thing. When there are a lot of uh, a discharge of negative ions in a storm, you actually kind of are feeling groovy? Well, I, I definitely feel that way. And I've heard other people that aren't even storm chasers about how thunderstorms make them feel good. And, um, you know, I've even read in some medical journals where they say negative ions... Uh, can make you feel euphoric, and thunderstorms do d discharge quite a bit of negative ions. So it's a possibility that that that, that is part of it. Uh, you know, I can't say for sure, but we should sell a negative ion product on some yeah. infomercial. <laughs> we'll make it rich and fund your your organization. Uh, thanks very much for coming on the show. Thanks, thanks for having us. Uh, go Red Wings. <laughs>